Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's John, Backwoods Off-Road and Overlanding. Uh, had a few questions out here already, and man, I know the stock on new bikes right now. It's really hard to come across a new bike. Um, I just picked up this. This is actually a 2018 model. And uh, before we get into it here, I'm gonna talk about why I didn't sit around and wait for the 2022 model and why I went ahead and picked up the 2018. Um, some things for you to think about, and uh, we're gonna roll the intro, and we're gonna get right into it, guys, so. Okay, guys, first and foremost, let's go ahead and run through uh, what all I've got decked out so far. Bought this as it is, uh, roughly about 1,500 miles. As you can see, it's been, it's been very, very, very well kept, okay? And I go ahead and apologize. My, man, my lighting in here just, just blows. I've, I've gotta, up, I've gotta upgrade the LED lights in here. But I digress. So, uh, this bike right here, out to door, man, was probably about a thousand, twelve hundred dollars less than if I would have weighed it and bought a 2022 model. So, uh, this was about 62, uh, tax out the door was about seven grand. Okay. So, so let's keep that in mind as we're going through this. Uh, what a, a, a 2022 model is going to be what about 65, seven grand plus tax. You, you're, you're knocking on $8,000 for a new bike here out the door price. Okay. So, so let's keep this in mind as we go through this bike. So, so I got seven grand out the door. Uh, we have got already, we've got some nice continental, uh, nice dual sport tires, very meaty. Uh, I've already got, I've got crash bar. Uh, I've got nice skid plate here. Uh, S, what's this? Uh, SW Motec skid plate. We got the SW Motec uh, hand guards. Uh, we've got the, uh, let's see, I can't pronounce it. We got the, what's that, Acropovic uh, titanium full exhaust, man. Uh, we've got the nice Corbin seat. We got the GV pan panniers with the monolock. For the boxes, same thing with the tail bag here. We got the mono lock as well. I, I didn't get the cases. That, that blows, but it's okay. We also got a nice GV lock box in here. Guy was nice enough to leave it there. Let's see uh, what other goodies do we have. We got the shift indicator. Man, I've already got a plug-in for my iPhone. I just got to get me a mount. Okay. Um, Here's a good look at this fat tire. Man, this thing is... Mm, look at my hand. Look, look, dude, look at the size of the meat of that tire. Man, this bike is sweet. So what I'm getting at, okay? So with this bike, let's say about seven grand out the door, guys. I paid cash for this, so it's paid for. Woo -woo, no payments. We got to get this and paid off here soon in the Grom. I sold some real estate, so we got to get them bills paid off. So anyway, so... Um, oh, we also got the uh, Honda visor and the visor extension, which is pretty sweet. So, I would have to guess, I, I've looked up a few of these parts, and man, guys, we're looking to about two to $3,000 worth of aftermarket parts on this bike. And this has been a well-kept bike, guys. I mean, the guy that had this bike built it for one ride. Wrote it out, and it's basically been in his garage ever since, and his old lady made him sell it. So if you were to get and build this same bike with a 2022 model, you'd have to you'd have well over 10 grand to get to this setup. I mean, that's a pretty, you know, that's that's a three grand difference in what I paid for this bike. So now, um spec-wise, uh, this is a 2018 model. So there's been a lot of updates since 2018 uh, into 2019 and then to 2022. Um, the biggest upgrades coming out of 2018 after 2018 is the integrated shift indicator like we have on our 300L. Uh, this one's got an aftermarket shift indicator, which isn't a big deal, you know. Um, years and years and years, you, you had to remember what gear you was in, but it's a pretty nice convenience. Um, Let's see all the models. Let's say 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. New model. They've got the what 4.7 gallon tank. Uh, the motor is man, basically the same motor. It's got the same bore and stroke. Uh, that they claim the 19 and up has 4% more uh, torque mid-range. Um, but same bore and stroke, um, same uh, 34 millimeter intake. Uh, they also say they did a little modification to the injectors. So um, 
I guess that's to help with the torque and maybe some miles per gallon. Um, what, let's see, what else do we've got? Um, suspension travel. So, so this is the 18 model. Uh, we don't have a whole lot of suspension travel. So 18 to 19, you're getting about another, an, I think 0.4 inches up front, which really isn't that much. And then like maybe I think 1.1.2 1. 1. inches in the rear. Um, you know, every little, every little bit helps, you know, and this is going to come down to, you know, what kind of riding you're going to do guys. Now, the 2022 model. Now, what I think the biggest, the biggest uh, wow factor for the 2022 model, guys. Well, let, let me let me back up. Let me back up one step. I'm a short guy. I'm five foot nine, and I've got a you know about a 31 inch inch uh, inseam. So one of the other big changes from 18 to 19 was they went from a 17 inch front wheel to a 19 inch front wheel and what that did with the suspension changes that added another inch of seat height so if you're a short guy you know an inch an inch makes a pretty good difference you um, know this one right here is man by golly perfect for me i got my pfg columbia's on my little boat fishing shoes and i, I roll pretty good man with my work boots I'm flat footed with, with both feet. So another inch, I might, you know, I might struggle a little bit. Um, so you're going to get the same seat height in the 19 up to the 22s. Now, now what I really liked about the 2022 guys is here, I got to get back to the other side of the bike. This, this is the, I guess the wow factor. And this is going to come down to, you know, personal preference and, and, and how you ride. Now they did go, let me get that lighting right. All right, so we've got uh, so so before 2022, we've got tr traditional forks up front. Okay, so what they did in 2022, they redesigned it and they went with inverted forks. So they went with, with inverted forks. Uh, they redesigned the swing arm, made it lighter and better suspension in the back to you know compensate for the better suspension up front. And, you know, a nice fancy uh, LCD screen. And the other big, big thing for 2022 was they put dual uh, brake cal calipers up front. And, man, I done put, since I've had this bike, oh, man, I done put about 100, 120, maybe 150 miles on this bike here just this past weekend. And, man, I mean, look at this rotor. This is plenty. I mean, in my opinion, in my opinion, this is plenty of braking. Um, one thing that I don't like is you can't turn off the ABS. They no longer sell non-ABS models. So if you're going to do a lot of off-road riding, which is going to be one of our first mods to this 500X, is I got to get the switch so I can just, I can turn my ABS on and off on the go. So is it worth? Um, and of course, you know, you go over to, uh, what, what, uh, pro, uh, uh, Pro Honda Kevin, man, he's got a great, great review on it with all the specs. So it's, uh, let me turn this around. Let me turn so, this around. I mean, it, it's really going to depend, guys, is first off is, is, is availability. Um, do you want to wait for it? Do you want to go ahead and get in one? Um, as they come in, man, so you might get some nice trade ins like this and get a good deal on it. You know, bike, a bike that's been well kept. Um, so it's really going to come down to, you know, there's been a lot of mi uh, minute changes along the way. But like I said, the biggest one is going to be the inverted forks, the dual disc brakes, which I think, I don't know why you need dual front disc brakes on this bike, because it's got plenty, plenty of stopping power. Unless you're just going to, you know, go stunt it and do, and do stoppies all day, then yeah, man, rock on. Um, but my personal experience with front brakes, I mean, you, you got to use both brakes. Um, I've actually had an incident in the past where I had a, a man bike I had in high school was a TTR 125 and was riding through sand and and I locked up my front disc brake and I cheese graded my whole shoulder. So uh, and then if you you ride that front brake, your front tire is going to wear wear really weird. And you guys got me ranting here, so I digress. So so it's really going to come down to you guys. You know, seat height. Uh, if you're a shorter guy, you're probably gonna want to look for the 2018 and earlier keep in mind the suspension travel is not as much so you're going to lose 0.4 fuck, half an inch watch half an inch guys and like 1.2 inches here in the back give or take which and that's not much and, and they make suspension about 700 bucks you can upgrade your suspension on these 
Oh man, it sure would be sweet to have the, what I really would like to have on the 22, 22 model is the inverted fork. So if, you, if you've ridden a lot of bikes, dirt bikes, um, the inverted forks, the technology of the inverted forks, it's just more stable. Um, let's say this bike over 60 uh, with these off-road tires here, these dual sport tires, it gets a little, you know, a little squirmish. And with, if you had your inverted forks, upgraded suspension, you know, a lot of that goes away and you get a lot better stability and control of your bike and all the geometry, you know, that comes with that. So, um, so that's, that's what it comes down to guys. You know, er, er, the answer to every question on this channel is going to be is it depends. What kind of riding are you going to do? Are you a tall guy? Are you a short guy? Are you planning on doing a lot of mods to the bike? How much money you got in your pocket? How deep are your pockets? Man, you might just get lucky like me and get one that's already decked out. And we just got to do a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And it's going to be perfect for me. So, like I said, it depends, you know. So, if you're a taller guy, man, you, you're probably going to want the 19 and, and, and newer model. Because you're going to have the 19 inch front wheel. Um, they are ca what cast alloy, so they're not spoke wheels. Um, let's see, what else can I think of? Um, man, guys, that's really about it. Um, this is just my two cents. Um, like any any of my advice I give out there, take that shit with a grain of salt. Go watch some other videos with the same information, and um, there's a lot of there's a lot of CB five hundred X videos out there. And, and, and watch them all, man. Watch them all. Go do your research. Do your due diligence. And but you know, my opinion, man, was it worth waiting the 22 model to get the inverted forks and, and upgraded suspension and another 0.4 inch of travel and 0.112 or 1.2 in the back and you know dual hubs in the front or do dual, dual uh, rotors in the front? Nah, it wasn't worth it, man. I mean. And, you know, all the deal, let's see, the past year, you know, I've done bought three Hondas from my local Honda dealer, and I've only seen one CB500X up there. And, I mean, the styling about looks the same to me. So, so you guys got me ranting. So, it depends. Uh, do your research. Check into it. Um, and it's, it's going to be on you guys. Um, it's going to be on you. Man, great freaking bike. Fucking, fucking great bike. Man. Man, I love this bike. We even went two up. I got a video I'm going to work on, but man, we hit the dirt road. Even even two up, I'm doing 60 down the dirt road, and it she just didn't miss a beat, guys. Just didn't miss a beat. Um, plenty of plenty of flip and power, and you know she's what 430 pounds. Which if you think about it, man, that's not much more than a KTM 690 Dual Sport. I mean, big ass fuel tank. Um, it's a man. It's so far, I mean, the, the, so far, the only gripe I've got about this bike is these foot pegs. Um, we're definitely going to have to get rid of this rubber, this rubber here. I mean, see, that's, yeah, ah, ah, I'm going to do a lot of off-road riding. So these get wet, these get slippery. So I'm definitely going to have to change these out. We we'll definitely have to change these out. And I might go with the lowering kit because, you know, it's kind of designed, you know, kind of like a CBR, man. It, it's gonna be tough at this angle with riding with riding boots on. I mean, like doing technical riding. I mean, I rode it this past weekend in my boots. I had no problems. You know, I kind of had to look for it here, here and there. But once we start doing some technical off road riding, it, it's gonna be a pain in the ass. So I'm most likely gonna gonna get a lowering peg here and get the nice upgraded non rubber more more dual sporty like you know we've got on a WR. And then our, our 300 L there, um, definitely some nice foot pegs. And um, that's it, guys. Um, like I said, it depends. And I'm ranting. So, man, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.